Hey guys, it's Simon here from Buff The Spot. And today I'm gonna to be sharing with you the three mistakes that I think most players make pre-flop and how to fix them. But first, before we jump into the action, I'd re like to recommend you guys check out Jimmy DeRaid's seven tips for how to crush pre-flop below. If you guys are looking to get better at improving your three betting game, uh, this is a fantastic resource. So the link's gonna be in the description. I really recommend you guys to go check it out. What's the first mistake? Well, the first mistake is not opening wide enough when there are fish or recreational players in the blinds. This can be the small blind or the big blind, but the biggest mistake I see is people following these pre-flop charts that they've been given to the exact letter and the exact combo and not adjusting for the fact that there might be a weaker player on the table. Now, in order to show you this, I think it's pretty handy we bring up an example. All right, so in order to show this to you guys, I've uh, brought up a, an example here of what like a typical uh, button opening range would look like. You can see here that we're opening about, you know, 42% of the time. Uh, and you know, there's a couple combos here like these jack fours, eight fives, you know, queen eight off that we're opening a fraction of the time. And this is something where the solver is saying, you know, in order to remain balanced versus a perfect opponent, we're gonna have to open these sometimes. And they're basically a zero EV decision. Now, what happens when there's a weaker player on the table, particularly in the blinds, is the edge that you guys have post-flop is gonna mean that these hands are now actual profitable opens. And actually, a couple hands wider than that are gonna be like, you know, able to be played. So if you see that there's a weaker player in the small blind or the big blind, you can probably open all of these stuff, you know, pure. And you can probably open like most of this stuff too. Um, you can get really, really creative depending on how much that guy is weaker than, um, you know, the pool is. So the bigger like the guy's V pip or the like, you know, the more aggressive he is, you, the more you can open these hands profitably. Now, you might be asking me, how do I know if a fish is in the blinds? Like, how do I spot a recreational player? And that's a really good question. Now, the biggest thing, particularly for you guys playing on reg tables is gonna be, is having a look at these two stats, and that's gonna be the VPIP and the PFR. Now, the VPIP means how often they voluntarily put money into the pot, and the PFR is how much they raise to put money into the pot. Typically, like uh, strong regulars are gonna have quite a small gap. They're gonna raise most of the time that they open and they're gonna open probably somewhere between 22 to 26% of the time and probably like 18 to 22% of the time, that's gonna be with a raise. Now, recreational players typically play a lot more hands than that. You're gonna find the typical VPIP is over 30, 35, 40, with like, you know, the really big losers opening like 80 to 90% of the time. And you're gonna find that they're not actually gonna be raising most of the time. They're gonna be like limping, they're gonna be calling. So their PFR is gonna be quite low. It's gonna be around like, you know, zero to 15, depending on like how many hands they're playing. So, you know, in this example I'm about to bring up, what we're gonna see is uh, I've got a hand right here. So in this hand I'm showing you, I'm on the button here with eight five suited. I have a look into the blinds and I've got about 52 hands on this guy and about 47 hands on this guy. Now we are playing three-handed, so you know ranges are gonna be a bit wider, but we can see here that this guy is playing 33% of the, his hands, but he's only raising them 14% of the time. And this is that gap between the VPIP and the PFR that I'm looking for that goes, you know what, this might be a bit of a weaker player and I can probably open a few more hands than I usually would. Now 8-5 suit isn't usually an open on the button, but this is a spot where you can potentially open quite a bit wider because you're gonna generate a lot more of an edge post-flop. So in this hand, we open 8-5. Uh, we actually get a call from the small one, which indicates we actually are playing against two recreationals. And we go to the flop. Um, don't need to play the rest of the hand out, but that's kind of the uh, gauge that we're looking for trying to identify whether someone's a fish. Now, you guys might play, um, and I play in a pool called Zone, uh, where it's all anonymous. Uh, and you know you don't get you only get one hand on a table. You move to a new table, and you like you know you don't get to build a sample on who, which guys are weak and which guys are strong. Now the typical rule of thumb that I use for adjusting wider on the um, button for that is going to be: is the guy got a full stack or not? 
If I know someone doesn't have a full stack, it's unlikely they're a regular. If they're sitting with 50, 60, 70 big blinds, the chances are the guy is actually a bit of a weaker player and isn't, isn't properly rolled for the game. So in this hand that I've got here, this is a three-handed zone game where you, know, you don't know who the opponents are and each hand you get dealt a new table. Now I've got king six on the button, which is not a typical button open. Normally we only defend, we only open, you know, king eight off, uh, king nine off plus. But here I see that this player isn't sitting with the full $500. He's only sitting with 328. And this is indicating to me that this guy might not be the strongest player. So I've decided to open king six off here um, as a bit of an adjustment. Like, you know, this hand is probably slightly losing versus, you know, a regular. But versus fish, this is something that I think we can make enough correct decisions and we're in position post-flop that we can open this profitably. So we open this hand, we face a call from queen seven, and we get a flop like this, 10, six, two. Uh, we, all, we already face a donk, and so our assumption that this guy might be a little bit weaker is already probably correct. This is not a flop where you'd expect to face many leads, um, and particularly not from a hand such as this. Um, in this spot, I'm electing just to call. I don't think there's much merit in raising. If the guy's bluffing, we want to let him to blast off. And if we raise, we're only going to get really get called by better. So we make the call. We get this kind of turn. And this is a turn that we're just going to want to check back and give him a chance to bluff the river. Or hopefully we can improve to a value hand. Um, and now we get the king. We've made two pair. Really good result here. Uh, we would have got some more bluff money out of him. He's now bluffed off with queen high in a spot that he really shouldn't be. Um, and now we, um, with a really strong two pair ourselves, can go for a value jam. Now, this is great because we hit our hand, but we're gonna get lots of profitable spots here versus like, you know, recreationals that are gonna make these kind of mistakes post-flop that a regular wouldn't make. And so this is why it's really important for you guys to adjust those ranges and uh, quickly identify if there's a fish at the table, where he is in, and if he's in the blinds, and if so, adjust your pre flop ranges accordingly. The second mistake that I see players make is not flooding other positions than the button or the big blind and really sticking to some rigid rules that they've heard from other play people about pre-flop play. One of the common things that I hear people say is don't flat the small blind. It's a losing play to flat the small blind. Don't flat the cutoff, don't flat MP. It's really hard to play this. And whilst this rule generally holds true uh, if there's regulars behind you, this doesn't account for the fact that there might be a weaker player that you wanna let into the pot by just calling, particularly with hands like pocket pairs, suited connectors, hands that play really well multi-way. Um, and you're just leaving money on the table by not allowing yourself to like, you know, break these typical rules that um, people recommend good players don't do. So the, the concept basically is, is let's say you're in the small blind and you're facing a raise from under the gun to a 2.2 or 2.5 X size in something pretty regular. And there's a really big fish behind you, someone playing 60% of the hands and only raising like five, 10% of the time. Now, if you look down at something like pocket fours or five, six suited, this is a hand that's gonna be typically a fold versus an under the gun raise. However, this isn't taking to the fact that if you call and you get to let in the fish behind you, this is now gonna be a, probably a pretty profitable spot. These hands are only gonna be slightly losing versus the regular, but the fact that you get to play an extra pot versus a fish is gonna allow you to play these hands, and a lot of people are giving up on EV in this spot by trying to stick too closely to what their pre-flop charts tell them and playing a three bet or fold strategy. Now, I've got an example here where I've got six, seven suited in the small blind. Okay, we're playing uh, 1K reg tables, and we can see that this guy here has quite like a 60 VPIP um, and a 15 PFR. So this guy, we played 26 hands with him, and we're pretty sure he's a pretty big whale. So he's the kind of guy we're looking to get involved with. Now, he elects to limp from MP, which is already a pretty big indication that he's probably not the strongest player. And he, we fa he faces an ISO from uh, this regular here who seems on the tighter side. Now, and folds to us in the small blind and we're here with six, seven suited wondering what to do. Now the typical kind of advice would be, you know, you wanna play three bet or fold from the small one and we don't really wanna do this. You know, the fish might do something crazy like back jam on us and we just like, you know, have to fold out our e equity. Um, this guy's actually gonna have a pretty strong range so we reopen the action for him to then four bet, it, four bet us and get us off our hand. So the play actually here is to make a flat. Now obviously we don't get amazing odds, we're calling $40 into a pot of 70 and we're gonna be playing out of position. But the fact that this guy's gonna make so many more mistakes post flop than us and then we're actually quite deep with him is it's actually a spot that I think we can quite profitably play. So we elect for the call here, and 
Um, it's really good because we get the fish to call as well. And we now go three way to a flop. We get this flop, not much going on. So we start off with a check and it checks through. We pick up a seven on the turn, which is a pretty good card for us. We've now got a pair, but obviously any flush beats us and we could still be behind. So we still check. Um, and now the fish bets $71. And this gets the reg to fold. You know, he's gonna fold all these over cards. Um, he's just gonna have to get out of the way here, particularly with us behind. And now we've got a position where now we're heads up versus the fish. And typically this guy's playing 60% of his hands. So this is gonna mean that he's got far too many cards and far too many different hands. And typically he's gonna over bluff almost most spots. So we, we are able to now profitably call with our second pair. And we get this king on the river. We then check and now we face another bet of half pot. We get really, really good odds to call. This guy's playing too many hands. He's probably too aggressive. Um, so we get a pretty easy call here with six, seven, and he's got jack eight off. Not a great combo, not a bad bluff from him, to be honest on the turn, given that he gets this way, but he really shouldn't be calling jack eight off pre. So this is a spot where we've kind of manufactured a spot that most people wouldn't really get into. And we get to play a really profitable bluff catch line versus a recreational. Um, that if we elected to three bet or fold, that we just never would have been in. The third mistake that I wanna share with you guys today is not leveraging the fish to put pressure on other regs. Now, this is a little bit complicated, but it basically goes something like this. Let's say a regular opens, and then you have a fish flat behind. This creates a really interesting dynamic, particularly if you're on the big blind or the small blind, where you get a really good spot to three bet and squeeze with a bunch more hands than you usually would, because it puts the reg in a really, really tough spot and increases your likelihood of going to, with the fish heads up post flop. So if we have a look at this hand here, uh, this is a spot where we're facing an open from a regular on the button and we have a recreational who's playing 52% of hands and only raising 2% of them call from the small blind and we have are in the big blind with pocket nines. Now whilst it may be tempting to just call, hopefully hit your set and pile in money post flop, this is actually a spot where we really wanna be putting as much pressure on the regular as possible by playing a really aggressive three bet strategy. This is gonna involve three betting like all of our off suit Broadway hands, suited Broadways, our medium to strong pocket pairs, and even stuff like suited connectors or like low pocket pairs, because what's gonna happen is the reg can't just you know punish us by four betting too wide, because the fish just might come along. He can't just four bet all his off suit Broadways, because this guy might just decide to back jam or call the four bet. Um, and we also are, have a really strong range after we do that, so we're kind of protected here. And what's gonna happen is he's gonna be in a really, really tough spot defending here, and he's gonna fold a lot of the time. And this is gonna create an awesome spot, because then when this guy calls, we're now just heads up in a, a single raise pot versus fish, or if it does go multi-way, we are at least the aggressor in this spot. So we put in the three bet here, and our plan kinda works out, we get the reg to fold, and we get the fish to call. And this is now a much more profitable spot. We're playing a bigger pot, heads up in position versus one fish, versus playing a multi-way pot out of position with a reg involved. And so this is a really big thing that you guys need to leverage in your games, is thinking about the, like, the dynamics and what, what, making those fish flats a really profitable spot for you to squeeze. Now, we hit a set on like a monotone flop, and normally you might be a little bit worried about a flush or something, but this guy's playing 52% of hands. He's not gonna have that many flushes. And we just get a really good spot just to start piling money uh, and we just bet bet uh, and we get the money in over three streets and he does have ace ace king off here with the ace of spades so it's actually not the worst call down by him but you can see that this is a hand that he should be three betting or four betting or trying to get him pre and he's playing far too passively and we just get to pile in money when we make a really good hand um, and we also get to just like you know we'll get we'll get him off the like medium strength hands all of the time post flop by attacking you know weak lines by him all right, well, that's been me for today, guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed the content. If you have, it'd mean a lot if you could like and subscribe below. Um, and I'm gonna leave with this hand below, and I really want to get a bit of feedback from you guys about what you guys think. Is this too loose uh, for me pre? What do you think of your decisions from the turn or the river? Uh, and leave a comment below to let me know what you think, and I'll give you guys my analysis on it next time we catch up. So I have ace three off. Uh, we've got a recreational limping under the gun, and we make the pretty loose ISO. Um, we make it $40, he calls. We get a flop like this, he checks. I decide to check behind with my ace high. And on this jack turn, he goes for this small bet. 
Uh, I decide to attack with a raise, make it 143. We get the call, and on this sixth river, he checks and we're left with a decision. I'd like you guys to let me know, what do you think of my pre-flop play? Was it too loose? Could we go even wider? And what would you guys do on this river? Are you gonna bluff? Are you gonna take your showdown and check? Um, and if you do bluff, what's sizing? All right, cheers guys, have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you guys later.